Hey everyone, Chris Madsen here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how in an assembly in SOLIDWORKS, you can switch configurations for a part that you have multiple configurations of. Let's do it. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're starting with our buttons that we put uh, the, spherical, the spherical head and the numbers on them. I don't like how spherical it is. It's making the projection just slightly unrealistic. It's not a, it's not a great, it's not great, but that's the geometry we chose for our random button, so we're just gonna stick with it. What I'm gonna do now is pop these into an assembly. So I'm gonna start a new assembly, assembly, this one. Okay, and I'm gonna browse for a part that I created earlier, which is this one, the house, a housing that I created. And now for this housing, I'm going to pop in the buttons that we had uh, done earlier. So I'm gonna get my button. Now interestingly, right underneath this, I can choose the configuration that I wanna put in there, button one, button two, or default. I'm gonna put in the default first uh, as if I was having an assembly without having had the colored buttons yet. So I'm gonna choose my default and I'm going to now assemble this in here. And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna grab this cylinder, hold shift, grab this cylinder, let go of shift and say that I want these to be concentric. And now you can see that uh, it's gone the wrong direction than what I wanted. But since I haven't moved my mouse yet, I still have this little thing up here that allows me to flip the mate direction, which I just did. And now this is, this is actually what I want. Whoa, I don't know what just happened there. I think I've messed that up somehow. Okay, control Z, control Z that one. Okay, there we go. All right. Now what I wanna do is grab this face and grab, holding shift, grab this face, say that those are gonna be concentric, okay? That's great, so that's produced uh, what I want there. All right, now um, I want to put a, a pattern, an assembly pattern, so I wanna put another button over here, but I'm doing it this way because uh, it's not necessarily, um, an optimal use of time when there's only two buttons, but I'm just gonna assume that we're working with cases where there are a lot of buttons and doing an assembly pattern would be really valuable. In this case, I think it would be valuable. So I'm gonna hide the current button so I can find the center to center distance between the holes. I can do that by right clicking over here and just saying hide that component. Then I can come in to evaluate and measure the distance from this cylinder to this cylinder and uh, it tells me that the center distance here is 46. If, uh, yeah, so 46 millimeters. Okay, great. So then I can come back here and turn this one back on. And then I can grab this guy. Well, I guess I grab him over here. And I'm going to assembly a linear pattern. I'm going to do an assembly of a linear pattern. I need to get the direction that I wanna go in. So I'm gonna turn on these um, planes. The direction I wanna go is this direction. Okay, did I pick that? Nope. I wanna go in that direction. And the pitch is going to be 46 millimeters. That's what we measured earlier. And I wanna have two of these. So there's my other one popping up right now. Okay, that's great. Now, interestingly, I can see that this button it still has a minus sign next to it because it can rotate in any way that it wants. But what I would like to do first is go see where the button numbers are so we can get the buttons uh, done just right there, the button letters done just right. Let me turn off these planes so we don't have to look at them. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to show how you can change the configuration of these parts. So one thing I can do is, um, come over here into this, open up the pattern because I have the button I patterned, see the, the, the pattern of the button and then the original button is up here. If I go to the original button, I can right click on it and I can go to configure component. And when I do that, I can see that I'm on the default component right now. I can go get button two. Button two was the green one, if I remember right. Okay, so there's our green one. We can see that now we have two green ones, which is not what we want, but I'm gonna go into this configuration that's right here. 
the one that's in the pattern, and I'm going to configure that one. And I'm going to configure this one to be button 1. And that one should get us what we want. That's right. Now, the bad part here is these are not oriented the way that we want them to be. But that's, that's OK. I happen to know that this is this got a minus sign on it, so it's still like completely rotating. And because it's a pattern of the other one, the other one's going to be following that as well. So what I think I can do here is pop my things back on. That's great. What I can do is grab this plane, and I can grab this plane, this one, and say that these ones are going to be parallel to each other. Okay, And that's going to get me all nice and oriented the way that I want it to be. Okay, so that is how you do that. I am not totally loving this particular product, so we're going to do a little bit of parametric modeling and change a few things. And there's a few things I want to change on this. This is beside the point for the video, but we might as well do it anyway. We've accomplished our main goal for the video at this point. What I want to do is make this less spherical up at the top here. And I want to see if I can get rid of these interferences, which are not great. And I'm interfering with the wall over here. So that's not great. So what I need to do is go into my button, just this one, right click on it, say open the part. I want to come in here into my design tree, into my revolve, into my sketch. And I want to manipulate a few things in my sketch. I would like this to not be as big. We'll make that 21, let's say. I'd also like this to not be as tall. So let's make this 20. <laughs> that was not great. Let's switch it to 30. OK. And, um, and then the other thing that's sort of driving me nuts on this one is this relationship right here, that this is tangent down here. And then it's, ta it's tangent up here, which means we have like a full arc and a super spherical thing at the top. So I want to I wanna delete this one. Let's delete that relation. And let's take this line. Yes, this is what I want right here. I want a much flatter button. A much flatter button is going to just be much more beautiful for me. So you can see what that's done with number one. That looks just so much better as it is. So let's save this. Then I'm going to come back over here into my assembly, which I have not saved yet. Okay, And we can see that it didn't change both of my buttons. Darn, why didn't it change both my buttons? I probably needed to be in there to change my default button instead of changing the green button. Let's see if that's true. If I rebuild this, I now have <laughs> some crazies going on. But the reason why we have crazies going on is because we have this going on in a design table. So we better go back over here to our part, back into our button appearance. Okay, Let's go ahead and save this because there's a little star by the name showing it wasn't uh, done that way. Let's go into our design table. Let's, um, let's edit the design table. And what are we going to see in our design table? I don't know. Let's let it update and see what we get. Okay, We don't want to bring in anything else at this point. Um, Button 2 has a different height than button 1, see 30 and 40. So I can switch this to a 3. And then it's got 18. And then it looks like this number is different. This was our sort of outer diameter at the bottom. I'm going to switch that to uh, that one. And then, I don't know, let's see what this does. Okay, There's button 1, excuse me, there's button 2. There's button one. They are now the same height. Let's go in here and save this. Let's go back over here to our assembly and see what we got. OK, this is looking a lot better. We have no crashes here at the bottom, meaning no interferences. Uh, but our button's still a little bit tall. I'd say let's go change that. And frankly, <coughs> if I want to have a sense for how much to change it, I'm going to do a measurement in here. And this is going to be just an ad hoc point to point measurement. So from here, okay, am I doing it? Am I doing it? Here, point to point. From here down to here. Did that work? No, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. Let's try it again. Okay. Um, I just had to hold. Okay, that's not working the way I want it to. Let me cancel that for a second. I'm going to find another way to measure this. Measure. Let's not do point to point. 
I'm going to do from this circle down to this plane, and I'm going to look for the normal distance, okay, which is this z height. Okay, so that's 13 millimeters. Okay, basically 13 millimeters. I'm going to change this to about 11, and we'll see what we get. Okay? So we want to decrease that height by about 11. All right, I'm going to go back over to the window. I'm going to go into the button appearance because that's what that one is called. In this case, I'm going to go into my default. <coughs> Actually, I'm not going to. Am I going to do that? Okay. I can. Which one do I want to change? I don't know that it really matters. I'm going to go into my design tree for my default, go into my revolve, edit my sketch. Okay, this is under defined sketch, first of all, which is not super cool. So let's fix that. I'll put a dimension on this thing. Okay, I'll get myself just a rounder number 35. Okay, and then we want to bring this one down by 11. So um, I'm going to go for uh, 40 minus 11. Okay, this is our button here. That's great. Let's see what happened with our other configurations. Button one, hard to tell if it got bigger or smaller. Okay, yeah, it's the same. I believe it's the, same, the correct height, but we can go into our design table and check that out. Edit design table. And this 40 should be a different number now for all of them, and it's not. So let's switch this to 29. And let's switch this to 29. Oh, actually, you know what? We wanted to do 29. We wanted to do whatever this was a second ago. Hold on, Control Z. Okay, 30. We wanted to do 30 minus 11. So we want this to be 19. We want this to be 19. And we want this to be 19. That's what we're actually after. Let's um, do that and see what happens. Great. Yeah, there's our smaller button. Let's see what button one looks like. Also smaller. Save this thing. Save. Come over to our assembly. Assembly. Yes. This is looking much more, much more beautiful. Um, the letters, the numbers are sort of giant, but nevertheless, you know, there we go. That's how we go in and we change the configuration of a part that has been put into an assembly already. And it's also how we use the parametric method, parametric modeling method, to go in and adjust the stuff afterwards to make it uh, even better for our liking. Okay, that's it. Hopefully that was helpful for you. I'll see you in the next video.